to. Hello and welcome again back to Observability at AWS. Today we're going to talk about Open Search, a really interesting open source project. Um, and I have with me Kyle. Hi, Kyle. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks. <laughs> cool. So, what is your role in AWS? What are you doing? Yeah, so I'm the senior developer advocate for Open Search at AWS. Um, so, you know, for those who don't know, developer advocate its role. Basically, um, you know, it takes a lot of different forms. Uh, I work out of the product team uh, for open search. And, uh, you know, my role is to make sure that I, there's that connection between people who are using, uh, in this case, our open source project, and then the people who are making decisions um, and assigning people to the uh, project in various ways. So, um, and then also helping people just get started and see how to use right. it. So uh, that's what I do on a day to day basis. Sounds like you're the perfect person for this one here. <laughs> All right. So um, first things first, what problem does open search really solve? What, what, what can you use it for? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. Um, so for those who don't know, open search is uh, derived from Elasticsearch and Kibana 7.10.2, uh, plus a few other pieces here and there. Um, and uh, it solves a number of problems, right? So what the software does is actually, um, it's really great at indexing things. Um, so it kind of derives from the database area, but you wouldn't call it a, a traditional database in a lot of ways. Um, so what it's really good at doing is taking a bunch of data, putting it in a way that you can quickly find things from it. So there's two typical roles. Um, one is general search. Um, you've got search in the role, so that might be uh, a catalog search. So when you go to a website, you type in, you want to find tacos, um, it'll find you all the tacos on the website. But probably more germane for this podcast, um, it's used for uh, you know uh, analytical use cases um, when trying to understand what your software is doing. So you're logging things, you are sending metrics, you're sending traces uh, to uh, Open Search through a variety of different connectors, um, and from your uh, your files, your things are generating those, the files, log files, or whatever it might be. Um, and then you're able to ingest those. And then when something goes wrong, or if you want to verify something is going right, you can then quickly query all that data that you've indexed um, and see what's going on. Cool. So if we stick with that observability use case, um, that means that you can essentially get all your logs from your applications where you're logging from other AWS services that spit out logs and everything together in one place. And you can query it and say like, okay, what's going on in this time frame, and probably visualize it, et cetera. I, I guess you will show us something later on. Uh, yeah. But before we get there, um, a little bit of context so that we know, you know, how, how does it work on a very high level? Where does it come from? Where are we going? Bit of context would help, I guess. Yeah, so, um, you know, architecturally, the way it kind of works is you have a number of different pieces inside the cluster, right? It's a distributed uh, search engine built on Lucene. Um, and Lucene is a long time uh, search library. It's been around for 22 years, but it's got so many features. It's, um, you know, age is a disadvantage in this case. Um, but you have different pieces that you're bringing in. So you have open search itself. Um, which is actually um, has quite a bit of functionality, but there's these other things that surround it, plugins and tools and everything that actually add a lot of functionality to it. Um, the cluster has multiple nodes in it, and those nodes might be assigned for ingesting data. They might be assigned for kind of, um, you know, coordinating the cluster. Uh, there's all sorts of different pieces that come into it. Um, so once the data comes in, different pieces are going to be um, doing different roles in the cluster, um, and each individual node can do multiple, uh, um, serve multiple roles. Um, and then um, from there, uh, there's a separate tool that's part of the Open Search project called Open Search Dashboards. Um, and that's where you would use it to actually do that querying. Typically, it's kind of a control panel and visualization tool um, and with a little bit of, of usage for uh, administering the, the cluster. Um, and so that's where you're going in and creating a dashboard. That's where you're querying the data. Uh, and that's where you're, you're actually interfacing with Open Search typically. Cool. Well, that's super impressive. Um... And you mentioned like it comes from different places, from different other yeah. open source projects. Do you have a kind of like overview in terms of the the history or the, the where, where where we are at this point? Yeah, so I think it's a really important context. Um, you know, just to to bring it out uh, a little bit. Um, 
you might look at this and go, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I've never heard of open search, or maybe I've heard some news about it. Um, but the history functionally, and I'll give a little visual here in a second, but um, I mean, people have heard of Elasticsearch and Kibana. Um, and this has been around for about 10 years. Um, and basically earlier in this year, earlier in January of uh, 2021, um, Elastic said, okay, um, we're gonna change the license on this. And previously, uh, the way that was licensed is there was an Apache 2.0 version of it. Um, and then there was um, a non-free version, uh, right? That, that used a proprietary license. Um, when I say free, I should say free and open source, right? Um, so they'd have a proprietary license. Um, and then they also had commercial things that you could buy on top of it. Um, so um, when that license change happened, all, everything changed. So I, I, I'm gonna switch over to a visual if you don't mind. Um, just to illustrate that. Sure. Um, Let's have a look. So if you can see my screen now, um, yes. I, I think the thing, it's a, it, like this, I've talked about this several times and I think this clear, clarifies it quite a bit. So you have this open source elastic surgeon in Kibana. Um, and um, even before uh, there was that license change, uh, there was something that AWS did um, because um, the way, and I mentioned this earlier, it's a lot of plugins, right? And these plugins kind of add a lot of functionality to it. If you were to go a year ago and download the open source Elasticsearch in Kibana, you'd have some functionality and you might be able to solve your problems, but it wouldn't have a lot of things that people want, like table stakes things, like security. Like it was just, you had no control over anybody accessing your data. So you had to do that outside the outside of the, the tool. Um, and you didn't have things like index management, which would allow you to kind of rotate um, indices and things like that. So uh, in 2019, um, AWS created Open Distro, and that's a kind of uh, little uh, circle and a D type of logo in the in, on the screen that I'm showing. Uh, basically, Open Distro with these open source plugins and tools. And um, Amazon has a um, service, Amazon Elasticsearch service, um, and they had developed in house a lot of these tools because there were similar tools available in um, the commercial offering, um, but our customers and our users, they needed more. Um, and so these plugins and tools were developed. And then in 2019, they, they open source those as Apache 2. So you have this thing called Open Distro for Elasticsearch. And that basically allowed you to have a full Apache 2.0, full featured um, stack uh, that you could use that you didn't have any encumbrances as far as uh, you know, proprietary licenses. Um, and that was pretty successful. Uh, and so that had a, a lot of components and we saw a pretty good adoption for it. A lot of larger organizations wanted to adopt something that they could have, maybe uh, use the, the Amazon Elasticsearch service and maybe also use something on-prem and they wanted to have the same uh, amount or maybe they just wanted something that was more full featured than, than what they could get. And they had a, a, an organizational uh, requirement to use only open source, purely open source license software. Um, so I actually joined the project when, when this started, or not when this started, but when it, this open distro was going on. Uh, I joined a little bit after it started. And um, so that was all fine and good. And then there's this, this license change that I uh, referred to. Um, so in January, 2021, the license change happened. And, and I'll tell you, um, it, it surprised us um, in a lot of ways. I, I distinctly remember the day I was in a meeting and uh, something unrelated and one of our, um, software manager, one of our software engineering managers, I was like, hey, uh, Elastic made this blog post and the blog post said they're changing the license and they're changing license to SSPL, which is made famous by Mongo, um, switching to that license. Um, and you could also get it under the Elastic license, which is the proprietary license they've had for a while. And I, I kind of thought, okay, well, Open Distro relies on this license with been a good run. I'm gonna find a new role. It'll be something different, a new challenge. Um, and after a lot of deliberation and, and uh, frankly, the, the uh, leadership in, in that part of them um, and part of this part of AWS, uh, the decision was made to not only just have open distro, which was plugins and tools that ran on top of open source Elasticsearch, but to actually fork the entire project. Uh, so that would be forking Elasticsearch and forking uh, Kibana um, into something brand new. Uh, this is, um, this forking was not particularly uh, straightforward. It's not like you push the little fork button on um, GitHub, but basically what it was was separating out because this was, it had um, 
open source and the non-open source components together. Um, and so the engineering team had to go and meticulously kind of tease out what was open source and what was not from this. Um, so that happened. And then um, after that, the open distro project, which is now <clears throat> in kind of archive state, we're no longer uh, maintaining that because there's no way to build on top of it. Um, you have, we're taking those plugin tools that were developed and then you're getting all this together to create the open search project. Um, so in the end, what you have is a completely um, open source Apache 2.0 uh, licensed um, project that gives you full features. It gives you um, all things you would expect out of uh, these. And we're gonna move it forward as well um, into the future. So um, those who had been using Elasticsearch and uh, Kibana and want to have a, um, a free open source uh, way of doing that, now have an option. Um, and then we, we also think that this is going to be something that will build the, you know, apparently the best um, search engine out there, right, uh, for this type of role. Um, so um, it's not just something where we're, we're doing this once. This is an ongoing commitment from, from the team to continue with, um, you know, that niche that was created. Awesome. And then I guess, to me, at least personally, this is something that I really, really love about AWS and, and Amazon as a whole, that um, we don't do half baked things, right? Like, when we commit, we go all in and customers, you, wider user base can rely on this, this is going to be around for good, right? Once we say, yep, right. we're going to do it, then we do it properly. And, you know, you can build on that and, and use that. Um, We've been talking so much about where it came from, which is interesting, but now I'm really, really curious. Like, can you show off something? It's, you teased so much now, I'm really, I wanna see something. Is it really working? Is it really that good? Is it really? Yeah, uh, and, and you know, the, the great thing is, you know, not only am I gonna show it to you, but you can use it yourself. Um, it, it's, we've reached 1.0, right? So on um, July 12th, it's GA. Congratulations. Um, so, Congratulations. Um, That's always so let's, uh, exciting. Yeah. Uh, and, and this was, I mean, we announced that we were going to do this forking that I'm showing on the screen here in January, and it took us till July to get to 1.0. So um, it, there certainly wasn't half done. So I'm going to switch over to, um, this is open search dashboards. Okay. Um, and this is running on my local machine. Um, and um, so it's just running in Docker, actually Docker Compose. Um, nice. I have a very secure password. And when you I, open I, search I, I, I can probably not guess what it is, but it's probably very, very similar to your username, I guess. Yeah, it rhymes with Radman. Um, so let's go ahead and log in. Um, so I'm loading open search. This is open search 1.0. Uh, and this is going to look pretty familiar uh, for those of you who use similar product before. Uh, but uh, basically, I'm, I'm logged in here. And one of the things that's easy to notice is that I'm a user. Um, and that's key here, right? Like with open. But if you used open source Elasticsearch, <clears throat> you didn't have users. If you used open distro, this is going to look very, very familiar, um, or Amazon Elasticsearch service. But uh, let's just go ahead and load some sample data in. Um, and this is included in the package. So this is just something that you could load yourself as soon as you get in. You can follow these instructions exactly. And we'll load all this. Um, this, this is flight data. Um, so just some sample stuff that not typically a, you know, an observability use case, but um, something that does show some um, capabilities of this. Um, so while this is loading, which will take a couple seconds, it's not that much. Here we go. Um, this is just randomly generated data. So not incredibly, um, uh, you know, nothing secure here. Um, so this is a, a dashboard that is uh, that you could create. This is just built in, but of course you can create your own bespoke dashboards if you'd like. Um, and it has a lot of features in it. Um, so like I said, this is flights going back and forth. Um, and this is all kind of standard toolkit stuff. So we wanted to see, uh, I live in Edmonton, Alberta. So I'm gonna look at uh, flights from Edmonton um, and then I'm just gonna apply changes. Um, and this should find all the, the different flights and different airlines that you'd have here. Uh, we can see different stuff. There's not a whole lot going on here. Maps are built in, uh, scroll up and see the flights here, three flights out of there. Um, and from here, this is kind of a neat visualization. You can see all the different flights and how they connect through. Um, and it's interactive as well. So you can actually uh, look at the different things. So I'm looking at destination countries. So here's Great Britain. And you can further apply filters. And this would show you um, how you can pile down into it. Now, from an, an observability standpoint, um, you can imagine how this might be used. You might be looking at 
the different um, services that you have in your architecture, different instances of those services, and how they're performing. Um, there's actually um, a specific toolkit here. I don't have any sample data for it, but for trace analytics, which is particularly germane to, um, to observability use cases. Um, so, um, you know, you can do a lot of things here, but this is not just dashboarding. Of course, you can um, go in and interact with the data directly. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, SQL, which I think most people are, you can run your data as SQL, um, or you can also look at things in PPL, which is a, a, an interesting um, query language that's kind of very similar to Unix pipes. Um, so you're piping data from one place to another. Um, so um, just a lot to do in, in this interface. And of course, this is dashboards. Like I said, if you're, you're interacting with it, you'd use dashboards rather than, than interacting with it. But if you wanted to, the really neat thing is OpenSearch um, uses the same uh, wire compatibility with Elasticsearch. So I could go right. ahead and use an Elasticsearch tool that I already have uh, implemented and drop it right in. Um, right. You know, there, there's, of course, some tools that, uh, that work great in it, and there's some tools that, um, you know, for whatever reason, there are some um, checks to make sure that they are licensed. Of course, if it's checking for licensing, open source Elasticsearch or open search would not be able to connect to it. But for the most part, most open source tools or custom tools do work the same way because it's wire compatible. Right. And I, so A, super, super impressive. I really like it. And B, just a clarification question. I suppose the open search plugins that we see here on the left hand side, that's what used to be uh, shipped through or available through uh, Open Distro. Is that right, roughly? Or? Yeah, you got it. Um, you got it. Um, the way that works is um, open search plugins. There's two different types. There's the dashboards plugins, which are the interface that you're seeing in front of you. So when I click on this, this is a one set of code. And then there's the the open search plugin, which is the uh, the kind of back end and the what interface is actually with the index. Um, so those came over, not unchanged, but um, evolved from Open Distro. Um, so Open Distro stopped at uh, 1.13, um, and the Open Search 1.0 um, plugins are kind of the next step from there. Cool, and that means with this dashboard, I have essentially one UI where I can essentially consume all my my signals here, but I can also manage the underlying index. It says index management there, so I could probably go there and see like, hey, you know, these fields and you know wh whatever it is. I don't know. Let's say you have some workload in EKS and use Fluentbit or whatever to to ship it, and you could then go in there and say like, hey, you know, this is what I want to have indexed, and and how, this is the way how I you know, want to use it within uh, a certain visualization. Is you got it, and you know, context? index management is so important when you're dealing with this because um, you know. When you're dealing with, with machine generated data, which probably we're talking, your audience is mostly looking at, um, mm -hmm. the value of that tends to um, erode over time, right? Um, mm -hmm. You, know, you want to know what's happening in the last 24 hours, but you maybe you want to keep things that are uh, a month old, but you don't really need to do anything with it. So index management allows you to uh, create kind of these index patterns and then um, make sure that those index patterns after certain times can like, let's say that, that they, based on a glob pattern. So the um, ones that, uh, you know, pass a certain version number or pass a certain date, they get mm. read only and you can dispose of them if you don't need them. And then you can actually query across this glob pattern and see the different pieces. And, you know, th that way you can kind of manage your, your data it, the way you can use the data and manage it in the way that you would use it. Like, uh, you know, you don't really care about what happened in um, January and, and you know, right. the, the traces that you're consuming. Right. Well, awesome. Um, so we've seen where it comes from, how it works, and actually that it works. <laughs> and, and we understand that it is, uh, is 1.0. So that's great. Any last words, any, you know, anything you want to um, share with folks before we wrap up and, and uh, say goodbye for today? Yeah, sure thing. Um, you know, the other thing I'd like to say is, you know, this is open source, right? So this is something you can use today. Um, there is uh, the uh, the Amazon Elasticsearch service. Um, there's a lot of questions around that. What's happening with that? Um, you know, it will become Amazon Open Search Service, and I think the official title for a while will be Amazon Open Search Service, successor to Amazon Elasticsearch Service. 
which oh, I, Corey will have a field day. Corey will have a field day. But yeah, okay, yeah. That's well, parenthetical names are always fun, right? Um, <laughs> but but it's important to understand that um, in that uh, basically uh, you will be able if you're currently a user of it, you'll still be able to use the engine that you were using previously. So um, we keep 19 versions, I think is the number uh, versions back. So if you are on uh, Open Distro 1.0 or even before that and you love it and you want to keep using it, fine. Um, you know, all the new development will be happening in Open Search. And so we would encourage you to use, um, you know, Open Search if you want to get the latest and greatest. Um, so there's that. I want to, want to make sure people understand that. That'll be coming in the next few weeks. I, could, I don't have a, a really good um, idea when, when that'll be available, but um, it's certainly um, furiously being worked on. Um, and then the other thing I want to tell people to do, if you're interested in the open source, is to, if I can get to my correct, uh, there we go, uh, go to opensearch.org. Um, this is the, our website, um, and there's a lot to see here. Um, you know, it tells you how to get started. If you want to do the exact demo that I have, it shows you how to use Docker Compose to do that. Um, but play with it, see what you can do with it, um, and see how you can integrate it into your, your particular project. The final thing I want people to do, so when you're on this website, go look at our roadmap. Um, okay. The really neat thing about this being open source is that we're as transparent as possible. You can see here, we've defined dates. 1.1 is targeted for August 30th. You can see all the different features that we're planning to wow. put into it. Uh, 1.2, October 11th, so on and so forth. Um, you can see all the different pieces that we're putting into it. Now, uh, you know, being open source, you can then dive into this and say, you know, this particular feature, anomaly detection, uh, AD config validation, maybe you have big opinions on it. Um, we want your input, we want your feedback. You can interact with, with this, you can contribute. Um, so that's what I tell people to do. You know, head on over to opensearch.org, take a look at everything, yeah. dive in and start providing feedback and contributing and uh, be part of this, this uh, really great piece of software. Awesome. Well, Kyle, thank you so much. This was really super interesting, useful, and um, I guess we now know and and, and know how to uh, go about uh, open search. I, I really appreciate your time and what you showed us here. And uh, well, uh, I'm I will make sure that uh, later that year when when uh, we have more uh, details about the, the managed service. Um, that I'll, I'll come back to you and, and ask you again, invite you again to uh, our observability at AWS. So thank Love you so much. It. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Yeah.